six. Yeah. Hey, if it's the runner boy, you nigga, no question. Yo. You would run a motherfucker high stepping. Yo. Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey. Motherfucker hey. never learned your lesson. Right. Yeah. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. Woo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Woo. 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 I mean, they walk a drink, blood things out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe. Right. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the. Uh, last one on Twitter asks, Canelo, you've said before you're uncomfortable fighting other Mexican fighters. However, would you ever fight a Mexican-American fighter like David Benavidez? Like I say, I represent Mexico, so that's why I don't like to fight with Mexican fighters anymore. But, you know, when, when, when you need to fight with, uh, with somebody, so why not? Like I say, I represent Mexico, so that's why I don't like to fight with Mexican fighters anymore. anybody but they they need to fight each other too because they just waiting for me because they wanna want they want a good payday so I know that but uh, they need to fight each other why why the, uh, and I fight uh, the winner of all of them and everybody wants to fight me so but they have many options too yeah. Fight each other. Like, why they don't fight each other? I just want to make history. The money is there, no matter what. I don't care about money. I care about my, my legacy. The fuck is that? I need it. This year I'm busy. Why they don't fight each other? Guys, always I say this, you share that video and put whatever you want. When I say I don't want to fight Mexican, it's because I represent Mexico. And that's why. But I don't care. I fight anybody. And I fight all, my entire life anybody. What do you think? I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to fight with Juan Mexico or Benavides. But look, I, I hear his dad talking a lot of shit. But look, what he's, look, he's accomplished, nothing. One single champion, Anthony Derrell. Please, don't disrespect myself. Please, guys. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Lightweight, lightweight baby. Drew Titan Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and salute to the Canelo Man fans. Y'all gonna get this work habitually until this man fights David Benavidez. How about that hot shit? And I don't care if the Benavides lose between now and 2023. I don't care. Fight that man. Fucking clown. Snagglepuss right here. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Snagglepuss. So, you know, this ain't going to be like no ill roasting session. I'm just going to reiterate the truth about this guy. Now, I'm letting you Canelo Man fans know right now. And you ladies, too. I don't fuck with this kid no more. I don't. I did enough justifying this kid. Y'all have no clue. I've gotten into full-blown fights on the internet 
over this kid. I've tried to protect the integrity of this kid until his integrity disappeared. He flat out stabbed real boxing supporters in the back. No, no, no. He stabbed us in the back and then punched us in the chest. All right? And you guys justifying what he does here? You same motherfuckers that hated Floyd Mayweather. Now, the only reason why I'm... Well, Oscar said something that I read and I just found that like roaringly funny and we're gonna get to the article we're gonna read it as a family eric h j get ratchet since 91 combat tool bag main event mark monster moose lifestyle calvin john calvin johnson miami snoopy rod neal cb sports deep fresh art hostage morning asante l settles newton db martha track robert singleton jelly bean my brother jeff spark in the building sam mack viva tu vida salute Slim Hussein, Mark Wunderlich, Edgar Chavez, Steve L. The Mac. Yeah, Art Hostage, we, man. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, touch on Triple G also. Pablo Escobar, salute. Unique Dawn, Outlaw Junior, salute. Cesar, what up? Josh Sanders, Jamal Davis, Rashad Livingston. Y'all must have forgot. Big Easy, salute. Slim Hussein, 88 Sports Talk, Santi L, Sam Mack, my brother Caesar early in that super chat, much love. He said, Drew Canelo talks doo doo about Benavidez not doing anything after the de- after <laughs> the debunk of the Mexican excuse. But regardless, he is a mandatory. Canelo is a joke. Yeah, we're gonna review all of it. That's why I found this picture and put it up. Because all of these parties are involved. You see Mauricio Silly Man over there. You see B-Hop's ugly ass right there. You see Canelo right here. You see Oscar there. And I got a lot to say about all of these dudes. I'm friends to none of them. Andrew Gray, salute. Tay D. Oh, shit jumped on me. Juice, what up? Mark Wonderlick, Brown on Boxing. Black Undertaker, Almighty Law, King Vani, DOG, Xavier, salute. <laughs> Xavier said Canelo can't hold ha- Canelo can't hold Hopkins job strap, but sure, I'm sure De La Hoya would love to hold it. <laughs> creepy weirdos. You got you got a creep on the right. You got a a, a, a a drug user in the middle. You got toothless aggression on the left. And, and the grand wizard of bullshit on the far left. Man, this picture speaks volumes, man. Gnarly Ray, salute. Joseph Townsend in the building. What up? Big Cup of Joe, salute. Fred Hampton. You know, at the end of the day, fuck everybody on the screen. Mahari, what up, bro? Fuck everybody on this screen at the end of the day. Dr. Mark in the building, salute. Um, but I wanna what I want to break down is uh what De La Hoya said. He said De La Hoya said the fight was a f- effing dud. Triple G old as F. Canelo can't hold Hopkins jockstrap. That's what it said. And this is written by Jake Donovan, friend to the strong house. Salute to Jake Donovan. Let us read. Oscar De La Hoya was overwhelmed by the final act of the trilogy in which he once played a significant role in. So already off the bat, you know he's hating. Let's just be honest. Oscar's hating. <laughs> the Hall of Fame former sixth division titleist and head of Golden Boy Promotions entered the fight week with uh, the hope of a third fight between Sanello, Sanello, Saul Canelo Alvarez, a.k.a. Snagglepuss and uh, Triple G Golovkin would be as memorable as the previous two entries. The end result of their DAZN pay-per-view main event by the way 
wait a minute. The zone pay per view. Why does that sound crazy to me? Oh, that reminds me of a song. It's called I'm a Failure. Big B Gaming asks, um, sometimes it, it can't be done, but how can Canelo be helped to make the decisions slash fights we want him to make? Um, well, he's the A side in everything. You understand? Pete, good morning. He's the A side. He can make any fight he wants. If Canelo said, I want to fight Anthony Joshua in, in April, 2023 they will make that fight all they're going to say is like all right what's the catch rate going to be you you know you got to come up to at least 215 and he could do it between walk around weight and clean beautiful and them fucking off in in england they could do it they would make that fight canelo could do whatever he wants to do because he's been doing it that's why i played that video you know they, they they want their bad day and i know that okay he said the money's there yeah. He almost black out for salute. He almost fought MacBook Air. He almost fought Mbaku from Wakanda. And we were like, who? Some cruiserweight dude with a belt. We was like, who? Who is that? And he almost did it. Now, why was he about to go up to fight Mbaku? And Mbaku had a green belt, didn't he? Now listen to this, y'all. Mbaku had a green belt. Mbaku from Wakanda had a green belt. He was going to go to Cruiserweight to fight Mbaku with the green belt. Y'all remember that? Here's my question. Cruiserweight is above light heavyweight. We didn't know who Mbaku was. But Cruiserweight is above light heavyweight. That didn't work out for whatever reason. So he did go to light heavyweight and fought Bevel, who looked subpar in his last two fights prior to Canelo. That's why we say that was a cherry pick gone wrong. But Mbaku had a green belt. You know who else had a green belt at 175? Lots of better beer. Oh, what the do 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 uh, Cambo, Froggy when he's courting, he did ride a sword and a, and a, and a revolver by his side. Cambo, take that. See that? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I peeped the play. That's why we said Dibble was a cherry pick gone wrong. Look at Dibble's previous fights before he fought Canelo. That's why everyone was, nobody was confident that Bill was going to beat uh, uh, Canelo. Everyone said, yo, he's either going to take a dive or he's going to get outboxed and knocked out. And Canelo went right up to 175 looking like a silverback gorilla again. What? How do you say hold my beer in Russian? That means hold my beer in Russian. <laughs> and he fucked them up. They still and they still tried to help Canelo 
They gave him the first four rounds. <laughs> Hold my beer, nigga. He beat the sombrero off the top of his fucking head. Get out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Racist in the morning. Get out your fucking feelings, man. Get out your feelings. Y'all co signing Canelo. I don't want to hear shit from y'all. <laughs> Cassandra, salute. Jay Grant. My brother Sam Max said, and Makabu won the WBC belt when it was vacant. Yep. Canelo was tr trying to knock off a paper champion so he can call himself a five division world champ. They ain't fooling nobody. And you see, nobody nobody wants to remember that. That's exactly what he tried to do. Because cruiserweight, like I said, is above heavyweight. All he wanted was to pad his legacy. I saw this play years ago. I said, what is he doing? Ain't nobody checking for no Mbaku from Wakanda. Ain't no one looking for Dave, what's good? Ain't no one checking for him. Look, look, look. Art hostage, look. He said, this shit looks staged. Art Hostage, you know what you do? Look at my live from yesterday and then look at Stormy's review. The night of the fight. There was some strange shit. There was some strange shit in the scorecards. But three parts of the Fantastic Four was in effect. Why is Russell Moore getting so much work? The only motherfucker that wasn't there was 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 Tim Cheatham. Are y'all okay? If y'all was anywhere in boxing, would you feel safe, whether you were the fighter or in the fighter's corner, would you feel safe with a fucking judge named Cheatham? Can't make this shit up, man. <laughs> oh my God. We had three parts of the Fantastic Four, and one of those motherfuckers, I don't think I think Sutherland, who's not part of Fantastic Four, he's just a co-feature. The round that we definitely gave Triple G, he gave to fucking Canelo. What the fuck was going on? I was like, what the fuck is that? Okay. We supposed to have faith in this sport, right? I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. This shit is going to blow up on, on an epic proportion. Y'all see Art Hostage in the chat? When we bring up things like Daniel Kenahan and Bob Irm's dealings with him and how it's a trickle-down effect, Eddie Hearn has dealt with this guy at some point. When shit hits the fan, we're going to find out a lot of shit. Nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens overnight. You're going to say, well, what the fuck does Eddie Hearn have to do with whatever? Yo, you're going to see. It's a domino effect. I'm telling you. I can't wait until somebody goes down and they, when they go down, they're getting big time. They're not coming out of prison. They're going to they have no loyalty to nothing. Right now, there's no reason for them to talk. There's no deal that Daniel Kennehan can cut. That'll say, oh, right, you know, if you give us something, we'll give you less time. No, when they, when they catch up to him, he's not getting out. That's why I'm going to be so intrigued if they catch him or when they catch him. Because then he's going to like, well, fuck it. You know, I'm throwing everybody under the bus. Bob Earl, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren. There might be some motherfuckers sitting over there on the PBC. You never know. What, you think we're pro-PBC because what, Al Hame is black? Fuck that. What did I tell y'all? What happened to Deontay happened on the PBC's watch. I don't trust no fucking body. How about that? Yeah, screen record that. Put that shit on Twitter. I don't trust any fucking body. I don't trust anybody. Y'all read comic books? They're about to do a version on uh, the MCU, the Scroll Invasion. 
without getting too nerdy on y'all, come to find out you don't know who the fuck is a scroll. The superhero you've been rooting for for the last two decades could be a fucking scroll. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. I'm looking at, every, well, you know, a couple of people that I know, that I can say I know personally, motherfuckers I can call on the phone. But I'm looking at everybody like, who sent you? Where are you from? What's your blood type? I don't trust any fucking body. This whole thing was bullshit. Because when you're sitting around on the outside looking and you're like, how the fuck could this happen? How could they? What the fuck? And I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who'd he shout out? Who the fuck is Daniel Kennedy? Who is that? Then you go to Google, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What the fuck is he doing involved in boxing? The rabbit hole got deeper and deeper. Come to find out our American asses, you're not thinking about what's going on over there. This guy's hot in these streets. He had his hands in boxing, has his hands in boxing, no fly list. Right over there, why hasn't ESPN said, yo, Savannah Marshall can't come to America? Why haven't they said that? The same reason why they're not going to tell you Tyson Fury can't come here. That has not been on ESPN not one fucking time. And if they can't do that, if they can't do simple something simple like leave Jamel Charlo and Devin Haney on a pound for pound list up high, Two undisputed champions, but you always find Lomachenko on a list every fucking way. If you can't, if we can't trust them to do that, this is an American, uh, uh, the, the, the leader in sports based in America. If we can't trust them to do that, what can we trust them to do? We're gonna trust them to tell the truth, even when Floyd was an active fighter for real. It was really difficult for them to find something positive to say about him. And this was your American champion. I don't care how you felt about him. Bottom line was he was a champion. It was really difficult. The only motherfucker that was on there saying something positive about him was Stephen A. Snitch. And that made me cringe. So this is what we're dealing with over here. So I'm supposed to fucking take what Canelo's given after I've justified his moves up until Clib uh, up until him dumping the belt instead of fighting Gennady Golovkin the first time, had me and Xavier running around these Facebook groups looking stupid. Why did you drop the belt? Why did you drop the belt? Our response was, I don't know. What are we going to do? There was no justifying that shit. We, we couldn't defend it. We could not defend it. He, he dumped the belt. What do you want? They clear beautiful? Uh-uh. No, nope. I said, no, nope. no, nope. I can't do it. I can't. Travis touched down in that super chat, much love. He said, hey, Drew, me and Big Daddy Kane are going back and forth about the Canelo fight on his Instagram. Right now, I got to hit up Marco. Because if y'all don't know, and by the way, y'all need to go subscribe to Champ and the Chump. Marco knows all these guys. And he had Kane on his Instagram interviewing him, man. I was like, oh, shit. I gotta get Kane in the strong house. Y'all can go, go to his Instagram, go subscribe to Champ and the Chump. That's uh, my brother Marco from New York and Jeremy Williams, former champion. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get Kane. I didn't know Kane was a, uh, a, a uh, um... <laughs> um, and P, oh, there, there's my brother. And P, what the fuck? What's good? Mo City Menace, salute. Marcus Fontaine, salute. Yeah, man. Phenomenal Mexican in the building. Oh, they booed him? I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know. You know what I mean? T Hunt, what up? I mean, I ain't know King was a uh, was a fight fan like that. I, I'll get him in here. Bro. I'm such a fan of Big Daddy King. I have him on my Mount Rushmore. I have a Mount Rushmore of, um, of rappers. It's four of them. That means they're number one. Everybody else under that is negotiable. 
Oh, yeah, he said, all right, well, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, but a, a lot of people, you know, go hell salute, you know, a lot of people think that, but, um, you know, we know that that's not true um, because he did not. He has contemporaries right now and we're going to discuss it. So let's get back to this article. Um. What did he say? What was I? Okay, the end result of the zone pay-per-view main event saw Alvarez take a lopsided unanimous decision over 12 rounds, largely devoid uh, of drama. <laughs> Saturday evening at the T-Mobile Arena in Vegas. I'll never go to Vegas to watch another boxing match ever again. I don't trust that city at all. All right. Um, uh, all right. The truth is everyone is afraid of speaking the truth. That's what Oscar said. Now, let me let me read what he says because I can tell in two seconds whether he did a line of coke before he <laughs> before they put a mic in his face. De La Hoya stated Sunday morning via social media, the fight was an F and dud, Triple G's old as F, and Canelo can't hold Bernard Hopkins' job strip. I don't know why he brought B-Hop into this because you know why? Not ready for this? Now, no doubt, Travis. No doubt. <laughs> Tony, what up? <laughs> and you know, the Canelo fans actually believe. <laughs> They actually believe that. <laughs> Those stakes. Those stakes. <laughs> the stakes is high. <laughs> Dave said Oscar did a whole eight ball. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, that's my shit. He said Oscar did a whole eight ball. <laughs> Yo, listen. Real talk, though. Oscar didn't have to bring B-Hop into this. Oscar could have used himself. What do I tell y'all about Oscar all the time? I have nothing bad to say about Oscar's boxing career. That man's a Hall of Famer. Check the resume. Just look it up. He beat Fernando Vargas. And then we found out later that Fernando Vargas was juiced. But he beat him. He stopped him, too. And Fernando was trying to kill him. You know, and I, I, you listen. Oscar's a Hall of Fame fighter. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue that. This shit he's doing as a promoter, I can't stand him. <laughs> he be talking shit. And I'm like, yo, no, what are you? Come on, man. Adonis. Yo, man. Y'all know Steve. You know he has a comic book, right? Y'all know Steve. Is making a character called the Donis because of Oscar. I swear to God. I swear to God he is. When he said that, who show did he say that on? Did he say that to he might have said it to he might have been on trail when he said it? When he's when he said it though, Black Cloud salute. Man, I almost fell out my seat laughing. I said he's gonna do it. He's making a character in his book called the Donis. Oh man. Man, you know how funny that shit is? The Donis. I will fight to the end and I will bleed to the end. He was high as fuck. So, all this shit, you know, getting fat. J Real, what up? It was on Triller? No, no, I'm talking about when when, when Steve Cunningham said he's going to make a, a, a comic book character called The Donis. That was because of what Oscar said during the trailer. Yeah, during the <laughs> during the broadcast, I was like, "Wait a minute, what would he say?" Y'all remember that? He looks like a Dadanis. I was like, "Oh, poor man, he's high right now. He was flush red." Man, that boy loves his drugs, man. You know, Oscar getting caught with fishnets. You know, look, he did the right thing by just saying, "Look, that picture's not photoshopped. It's really me." Just, just get it off. Just, just, just admit it. And he says, "Yeah, I have a, a drug problem." 
fine, okay. He owned it. And he's moved forward. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he looks like a the dentist. I was like, oh, man. The only reason why I didn't mute that, because I knew when I saw the panel, how, who, okay, they're going to talk boxing. Oscar's high. And who else was sitting there? Snoop Dogg? I was like, oh, I got to hear this. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Rick, what up, man? Oh, man. That was funny. He was fucked up. Word, Dave. He was high. He was drunk. Fat cat. What up, bro? It was it was all bad that night. Oh, man. Snoop was high. Oscar was high. Who else was there? It was, it was, it was just all bad, man. It was all bad. But yeah, and you know what, Jamal? Yeah, you're right. Look at Oscar's re- look at that's what I'm saying. Oscar really didn't have to bring up Canelo. Look at Oscar's resume. It blows Canelo out the water. Oh wow, I can't use Oscar and blow in the same sentence. Blow meaning myth and blow meaning what he likes to do. Oh no. What? That's fucked up. That's fucked up. <laughs> he said Trilla has not recovered. No. Nope. Man. Anyway, he brings up B Hop and he's right, but he didn't need to. What does he say? He says, uh, both were among this the year's best fights in 2017 and 2018, respectively, with uncertainty surrounding the outcome prior to the scorecards being read. The first ended in a split decision draw. Though on the night most observers thought the thought a, a then unbeaten Golovkin deserved the win with the decision to retain the middleweight title. So Alvarez claimed uh, a majority decision in the 2018 rematch. I agree with that. Uh, in uh, the fight preceding his Golden Boys uh, alignment with the Zone, which had which, which had just launched at the time, that the Zone deal was some crack a lack of both. Do y'all know Triple G got like stock options or some shit? Or ownership in the, in the zone or some shit? I wonder how that's going. Um, let me scroll down here. All right, well, fuck it. You know what? Y'all go to uh boxing scene. Links in it. Well, links in, in the description, but you know, y'all, y'all see it yourself. All right, there goes my boy, DJ Seven for Life. Come a member, he's now in the strong house, man. Salute to you. Take that. Yes, yeah, sir. Much love. Jelly Bean, what up? Um uh, but I certainly Snacks B, what up? I certainly uh uh understand both sides of the spectrum. Um Uh, business purposes, it makes sense that Oscar's shitting on Canelo because he has no he has no business dealings with him anymore. Now he brought up Bernard Hopkins. Do we are we really going to compare Bernard Hopkins' resume to Canelo? Well, let's just do this. Do you recall Bernard Hopkins ever saying he's not going to fight somebody because they're the same race as him? No, I don't recall Oscar saying that. No, uh, shit. In the history of the sport, A1 Hoops on salute. In the history of the sport, has any? Now I need y'all help. Has any fighter in the history of this sport ever said that? That's what I'm saying. If you a Canelo man fan and you cool with this, there's something wrong with you. I'm going to break this glass every time. Pick a black fighter today. From the creme de la creme and Deontay Wilder to the people y'all not paying attention to yet, like Speedy Rashidi. Can you imagine if any one of them said that? You already know what time it is. You already know what would have happened. Devin... And Bill 
was on 78 show and Devin said I never let a white boy beat me and we know who he was talking about there's only one golden white boy that that that, that ducked him that was Loma who's coming back and instead of jumping into the fucking fire he needs a warm up did Usyk need a warm up stop Ed what up hand dog He said it there, and then that y'all remember that morning? It was plastered all over the internet. Devin Haney says he'll never let a white person beat him. Made the brother apologize. Remember that? Y'all remember that shit? Did they make that gubba from Australia? He's about to school again. Apologize for calling him boy several times. Did they did they make him do it? A B, what up? Fresh, what up? Never did it. I'm like, wow. And I was looking for it. I said, yo, he called him boy. He said it again. He said it again. He said it again. What the fuck? Nothing? Nothing? Fuck that gubba. Now, son, what up? Fuck that gubba. I hope he fall out the ring and bump his fucking head. Yeah, I don't care. Because y'all don't care. I'll always hold on to what I say. Oh, Drew said car fire. Damn right. And I stand on it. Damn right. Y'all know why I said it. Gnarly Ray, what up? Y'all know why I said it. Y'all don't give a shit. Meanwhile, y'all wanted Floyd to jump into a ring with Manny Pacquiao and said he's being a bitch because he's scared of drugs. And if his defense is so good, he shouldn't worry about a, a fighter uh, 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 being juiced up or not. You realize how stupid y'all fucking sound? It was never about fairness with y'all. It never is. It never is. It's about the fighter you love as opposed to the fighter you hate. And sometimes y'all don't have a horse in a race. You just no, y'all do have a horse in the race. You just don't like the black fighter. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are we talking about here? Hold on. All he wants is OSDT. All Floyd made with the one that was Olympic style drug testing. What is the problem? Oh, Floyd's trying to change the rules. Wait a minute. Do we really need to discuss changing rules? Let us review. Manny Pacquiao. All right, and this is back when Floyd Mayweather agreed to the 50-50. Do y'all even remember when he agreed to 50-50? Uh-huh, he did. He did. I have every article. Don't fucking play with me. You know what I'm saying? He agreed to 50-50, right? All right, that's the first thing. He said, all I want is OSDT and we got to fight. Freddie Roach said, okay, we want our choice in ring size. They wanted a smaller ring. Why? Because they thought, they thought uh, Floyd was going to get in there and run. That's where the chicken emojis y'all remember the, the the kentucky fried chicken uh uh meme and they removed the colonel's face and put floyd's face in it you know how racist that shit is but never mind that showtime major salute and grill salute they said we want our choice in ring size floyd said okay all right we want our choice in glove size now hold on now can you imagine the heavyweights squeezing their hands in the smaller gloves from straw weights? You might as well be wearing UFC gloves. But Floyd said, okay. We want a 50-50 split. Floyd said, okay. We want our choice in venue. We want to take it to Dallas. Floyd said, okay. We want $10 million dollars for every pound you come in overweight. Because y'all remember when he came out of retirement, he fought Juan Manuel Marquez and he couldn't make the weight. So he had to pay Marquez for the fight that happened. Y'all remember that? Uh, yeah, my job, you remember that that, 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 that that happened? Those are five things. Floyd said, okay. All I want is Olympic style drug testing. Then they said, we don't want to get tested seven days prior to the thing 
prior to the date that 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 was when i just lost it i said come on what the fuck is this olympic style drug testing means you're being random you could be on the way to dinner with your wife and with jinky and they'll be out right outside your door hey whoa you can go to dinner but let me see your finger for a minute That's right, Dave. They wanted a catch weight, too, of 145. And if he didn't make 145, he was going to get penalized $10 million for every pound he came in overweight. And he had to be 145 on fight night. And this is a 147-pound champion. Who, by the way, he just drank Miguel Cotto, who was the fucking champion. You remember that? Yeah, I'm fighting Cotto, but he has to come down to 145. Y'all remember that? You know how I know Cotto would have beat him if he came in healthy? Because when he went back in the negotiations with him, he reached out to him with Floyd. He reached out to Miguel Cotto. Miguel Cotto says, yeah, I'll fight you. But it's going to be on my terms. Because he had just beat um, Marivella. <laughs> he had just beat him. And he said, all right, I'll fight you again. But you're going to fight on my terms. I'm not draining again. Man, he ain't want the fight. Now, that's why I tell these pack tards. That, that's why they've disappeared. That's the real reason. Everything I said to you is etched in stone. And even during all of that, during all of that, they still found fault with Miguel, I mean, with uh, with Floyd Mayweather, even on ESPN. With all of these facts, they never said anything. They talked about the cutoff date for uh, OSDT. I said, why is there a cutoff date? You remember what the Pat Tosh used to say to us? Hey, man, Floyd wants to drain Manny. Y'all remember the excuses? Manny has that condition where you're scared of the sight of blood. I said, yo, wait, hold on. He's scared at the sight of blood to make some nauseous. Did y'all see what he did to David Diaz's face? Go look at that fight. He beat the shit out of him. You know, like Frankenstein when he got done with him. I was like, what the fuck? What are you talking about? Man, he's gotten cut himself in fights. Why wasn't he uh, and fainting in the goddamn corner? What are you talking about? There were people arguing with me back and forth. This was before live streams, y'all. This is when you had to go. This is when you had to go to a page and you get dragged into an argument after just sharing a harmless opinion and you're getting called all kind of niggas. Remember that? And you had to click refresh to see what they respond to you. This is before live streams, y'all. A large part of that behavior was why 78 started the LDBC because we couldn't go nowhere without getting called a nigger. And I didn't have my face attached to my avatar. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just said Floyd beats him. Why am I getting called all kinds of niggas? What the fuck is this? Yeah. Getting into a month-long argument with some dude, some dude named Boom Ala Boom 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 from fucking the Philippines from somewhere. Simdak Akak. The fuck? Going back and forth with the yo, never mind that shit. Why why I gotta be a nigga? What is that? Get the fuck out of here. Devon now gave the salute. Jermaine, what up? That's how it started. We couldn't, and for those of you that don't know, to be a black fight fan, you couldn't go anywhere without getting called out your fucking name. And we got tired of that shit. Just a little history. That's why that's what the LDBC is. So you motherfuckers running around on Twitter with a preconceived notion about who you think we are. You even know why we got started. We're in our own lane talking boxing how we see it. Not all of us agree on boxing, but we talk amongst ourselves. And y'all come over here fucking with us. Leave us alone. That's it. That's it. Don't fuck with us. That's it. Fuck with me. Yeah, go subscribe to my brother's combat tool bag, please. Johnny Q, what up? This is the, this is the bullshit.
Pactards. Racist fucking uh, Latino fans. We never fired the first shot. Now that I promise you we never did. We never came into someone else's shack, guns blazing, saying, fuck you Mexicans or fuck you Pinoys. We never did that. We never do. We never start. It's always y'all motherfuckers. I'm talking about y'all racist motherfuckers. We said, yeah, boss red, what up? We pack up, we leave, and we're talking boxing. And then y'all come in here with troll accounts and all kinds of weird shit. That's it. I don't know what they saying on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. You got negative to say about my brothers and sisters? Fuck y'all. And that's it, because I know what I know. All that hate, no one never bothered to ask, yo, what is the LDBC? Why did what happened? How did how did this start? I just gave you the short version. It's true. Right now, we don't bother nobody. I don't see us everywhere else fucking with people on their channel. We y'all don't see that. I can't go everywhere because when I go to a non-LBBC channel just to support somebody, there's always somebody in that chat that can't get to me here anywhere else. But oh, it's it's fair game over there. That motherfucker might be wrenched over there. Oh, fuck you, Drew Tyner. Uh, yeah, you pick now. We're talking boxing. You pick now to come fuck with me. You see why we can't go everywhere? So to save the trouble, I don't go everywhere. I don't. Some motherfuckers, they got a problem with me or wrenched or, or it's somewhere else. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that shit. Leave me the fuck alone. Leave us the fuck alone. Anyway, back to boxing. That's right, Dave. <clears throat> When Pacquiao fought Josh Cloudy, that was supposed to be Floyd. But Manny was scared of needles, but he got tattoos. Remember that? He's scared of needles. He's scared of the sight of his own blood. These were full-blown caps for this motherfucker. And nobody cared. Nobody cared. Jafari, what up? Nobody cared. Why? Because everyone hated Floyd. Now, Floyd's a fucking douche. But I ain't gonna talk about his boxing career that much. In that aspect, I remember the pack tarts. So, I will remain on code. Oh, I know main event, Mark. I, 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 listen, you wanna know who's LDBC? We have a list. And that's all I'm gonna say. So any of you motherfuckers running around in other chats that we don't fuck with, talking about, oh, LDBC. I don't know you. What's your number? Everybody got a number. What's your number? What's your number, motherfucker? Who are you? Who sent you? I'm going to tell you this. If you're a double agent and you're found somewhere else and you have a number, you will be kicked the fuck out. Geo James, salute. You will be kicked the fuck out. You don't come rubbing elbows with us and then go other places and, and starting bullshit. That's not what we do. You shouldn't be over there. Wherever, wherever there is, get the fuck out. Don't run over there with our name. I don't give a fuck if you got a number or not. Don't run over somewhere where we don't fuck with that person arguing in the fucking chat. Don't do that. And we're telling you that for legal reasons. Mentor, what up? We're, I'm going to say it again. We're telling you that for legal reasons. What I always say, documentation beats conversation. Mac of the South, salute. We're telling you that for a reason. Don't do that shit. I got a whole folder of screenshots. A whole folder of weirdos. Of death threats. Threatens, threats of violence. And I'm like, how did we get here? We're talking boxing. What the fuck? Okay. That's how you want to play it. So in the event that something does happen, we can explain everything. Look, we don't know who these people are, but this, that motherfucker laying on the floor, this could be him. Pick up his phone and go to his YouTube. Try to go to any one of our channels. I bet he blocked. I'm giving y'all gems now. You don't always have to fight with your fists. Mm-hmm. Okay. But 
think about it. Think about why Black Wall Street got burned down. Mm -hmm. Which is why I don't understand Black people that have a problem with us. It's lack of education. It's jealousy. Who shot Nipsey? Was it a cracker or a nigger? Who shot Nipsey and kicked him while he was on the ground? Was it a cracker or a nigger? Hmm. Okay. That's the jealousy part. Anyway, boxing place. Um, fuck Manny Pacquiao and his Pacquiao fans. And I brought him up for a reason. Um, Pacquiao has, he had a fan base. Thomas, what up? No doubt. Pacquiao has a fan base very similar to Canelo's fan base. I forgot what live stream I had, but I don't know. I think I had a live stream. I had a link in the chat, and some dude, who I, you know what it was? He had a he, he had a um, he had an avatar, and I thought it was somebody else. So I let him on. You know who I thought it was? I thought it was my brother, um, Champion Heart. It looked it, it looked similar, but I couldn't see it. Soul Power, what up? I couldn't see it, so I said, "Oh, that's my." And I didn't read the name. I just let him on. When I looked, I said, "Oh, that's not him." I said, "All right, well, fuck it. I'm gonna let him on anyway." some Latino dude you know what I'm saying and I just asked him I said what you got on this yeah you know well you know, I think it's time for Canelo to get respect I'm like you been have respect you know you know I think it's time for you guys to start giving whoa, whoa what do you mean you guys start giving him respect you've been giving respect so I said well wait a minute he said he want to fight Mexican fighters what was what's that no, well, he doesn't want to hurt his people anymore. So he wants to hurt everybody else. But Mexicans? Wait a minute, this is sport? So you must have a problem with Juan Manuel Marquez and Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales. They all fought each other at some point. Wait a minute. When boxers start boxing in Mexico, what, do they just import Europeans and black people from all sides of the globe. Oh, I'm sorry. There's black people in Mexico, too. You thought I forgot about that? So I'm wondering. WTF is going on with that thought process. In other words, that wasn't there with that dumb motherfucker until Canelo put that shit out in the universe. It's like the changing of the tides. You know what I'm saying? Like if Manny Pacquiao comes out and says, yo, look, man, I always like Floyd Mayweather. I'm in a fan of his. You know what I'm saying? Gerard, what up? Harlem on deck. You know, I'm always been a fan. We've always been friends behind the scenes, man. This was just one big work, man. I really love this guy, man. I brought the family to his house and I, he let me drive his Bentley. And, you know, I've always been a friend of his. Y'all just didn't know. How y'all Pacquiao is going to feel if that news came out? You know what I'm going to say? Told you. I ain't gonna feel no way about it. I don't care. Y'all gonna flow with him? Or y'all gonna hate Manny now? Canelo fans are just like that. He says, I don't fight Mexican fighters. I don't I, I don't want to, but I'll fight anybody. Is that a yes or a no? You fucking idiot. This is why I stopped fucking with this guy. Why even say that? Keep that shit to yourself, stupid. There's only two Mexicans that could stop you right now. David Hambone, salute. Zerto and Benavidez. Those are the only two motherfuckers I see right now that can get into the ring with you. What's the problem? You don't want to fight them because what? I told y'all a long time ago, Benavidez ain't even Mexican. He's American. He got Mexican blood and Something else. But I saw him come to the fucking ring in the sombrero. And guess what? To you racist fans, he's Mexican when he's fighting every other ethnicity. You're rooting for him. He was Mexican when he beat the shit out of Darrell. Yeah, he was. Y'all take it. If he get in the ring with Caleb Plant, he is Mexican. Y'all take it. He's calling out Canelo. 
Canelo's more Mexican with that fucking red hand, pale body. He's more Mexican than him. That's how you want to play it. I see how stupid this shit sounds. This is fucking retarded. But these are the lines that Canelo drew. So now you got Oscar saying, man, this guy's boring. He ain't shit. You know what? Listen to me very carefully. Oscar career or Canelo's career? Now I know Canelo will be in the Hall of Fame and he's the first uh, in four belt era, undisputed at 168. I don't care about that shit. Oscar De La Hoya has given me more memorable moments in that ring than Canelo has. And I can say Oscar De La Hoya didn't duck smoke. I wanted to see him fight Floyd a little earlier. But he fought him. Tony, you're absolutely correct. And salute to Stormy, because he said that. Bruce Gass, upper echelon, salute. Salute to Stormy. He said that. You see, these fighters know who's coming. These fighters know about the guys who... We see the guys once they break the top 10. But in the world, they know about these guys coming up. He always knew about Benavidez. Did y'all see that picture of him with his arm around Bibble? You know what's the first thing I noticed? How fucking big he was. George, what up? <clears throat> yeah, Oscar even fought Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> I mean, a lot of y'all didn't know how serious it was until they got in the ring and stared each other down. I said, uh oh. Then you realize, oh shit, B Hop is over six feet tall. Oh shit. I've authority, salute. Like, oh shit, wait a minute, this ain't gonna end well. And Oscar was doing okay until hey man I mean seriously Oscar De La Hoya had a very good career he had a great career he's a Hall of Famer man hey yo listen I'm ready to put Miguel Cotto in the Hall of Fame right now. Robberies and all. I'm ready to put him in there right now. Canelo told you the money's going to be there. He accused everybody wanting to fight him, just wanting a payday. And he's saying the money's going to be there. I'm fighting for legacy. Are you? I don't want to fight Mexicans. Because I'm Mexican, but I fight anybody. Is that a yes? Or oh, I had Benavidez's daddy talking shit, but he hasn't done anything. Who he fought? Who he fought? One champion, uh, 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 Darrell? This sounds awfully familiar. Troy, what up? This sounds awfully familiar. I remember when AJ and Eddie Hearn. Yeah, what, 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 has, what has Deontay done? What has Deontay done? He hasn't done anything. Anthony Joshua sells out Wembley. He sells out the old two. He sells out soccer stadiums, football stadiums. Deontay Wilder, he can't even sell out Alabama. Some guy from Alabama. Y'all remember that shit? Y'all remember that? What has he done? I don't know. He's only been a WBC champion. About by then, it was what? seven defenses seven to eight defenses how about this never mind that shit if Deontay Wilder's easy work bring him to Wembley or the O2 beat him and become a disputed I don't know what the problem was unless he was chicken shit you fucking liar I was sick of Eddie Hearn it's Jay Gibson salute I was sick of Eddie Hearn as soon as that shit got started Doesn't that sound like what AJ was doing to uh, Deontay? What has he done type shit? Yo, listen, here's what he's done. He's fought for his position and he's a legitimate threat and y'all can sell some seats. Mexican flags waving. There's no horse in the race because you're breaking bread with your brethren. 
and he's American, dude. Not technically, he was born here. He don't need a green card, motherfucker. But y'all motherfuckers rep, rep Mexico. Andy Ruiz born here, but he reps Mexico, right? Which is perfectly fine. Well, what is this shit? That's why Oscar's talking shit. Never mind the fact that he probably did a line of coke and everything else. But in this instance, I'll, I'll side with Oscar in reference to this. Is he lying? Read the article yourself. Did the fight live up to the hype? No. Wait, 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 hold on. What was the hype? A lot of people thought that Triple G was going to get knocked out. Tell the truth. I said split decision, Triple G loses. A lot of y'all thought he was going to get knocked out. A lot of y'all said, yo, nah, nah, G getting knocked out. Triple G getting knocked out. And I said, you know, that that's possible. The man's 40. He might not have it. His age might show up in this fight on, on such a bad note. It might. But um, no, it turned out to be a little more competitive than we thought, didn't it? And then when you're reading the cards, you're like, what's going on? And then I said, oh, shit. Mara getting a lot of work lately in Vegas, in Vegas, in Vegas. Oh shit, a few parts of the Fantastic Four was there. Yeah, two judges and more. Wines fell. I was like, oh shit. Hey man, this is boxing. He was supposed to wash Triple G and he couldn't do it. Now I want y'all to understand something, y'all. Listen to me. And listen carefully. You would think Caleb Plant was a more, more of a threat than Triple G would be. He was younger, boxed better, and he was in the fight until he he was in the fight until he wasn't in the fight. How the fuck does he stop Caleb Plant and he still can't stop Gennady Golovkin? Is Triple G really that good? Is he really that kryptonite? Does he really walk away from this sport or does he have some something left? Was that really the the uh, uh, residue based off of what happened, OTB, with a, based off of what happened with um, Bivol? Because he wasn't gun shy. <clears throat> he showed Triple G less respect than he did in the first two fights. I'll say that. But he couldn't get off like how we thought he'd get off. He just didn't do it. And there was things I saw in Triple G. Yeah, yeah, he's aged. I only saw him pop up, pop out that uh, triple jab once. Because he was scared of what was coming back. Those guys officially canceled each other out. What I want Triple G to do, the same thing that Canelo uh, refuses to do. Now watch this. How's this for a loop? How's this for a loop? I want, I would give Triple G some respect if he fought a Charlo, if he fought Andre, if he did that before he retired. I may have lost to Canelo, but I fought Andre, then I fought the, you know, hey, no guys, I, I fought the Andre, then I fought the Charlo. At least he did it. What if Triple G fights Benavides? Those would be three fights he could leave his career holding his head in his arms because he's gonna get his shit knocked off. But he'll leave the he'll leave the sport saying I did that. How could fucking Canelo allow Triple G? Because by the time he gets all three of those fights, he'll be like forty three years old. Can you imagine that? 
everyone would be looking at Canelo like, yo, bro, okay, okay, okay. Well, two of them black motherfuckers ain't Mexican. What was that? And let me ask you, Canelo fans, let me ask you something. What the fuck do you want to see him do? Listen, get it out your mind. He's not beating Bibble. Okay? He's not beating Bibble. Bibble, didn't he say he'd come down to 168 and rematch him? That was against my judgment. Like, nah, I don't, I don't think he should do that. But he, he said he'd do it. He's not beating Bibble. What's that 175 for Canelo? Bivol, let me tell you something. If he beats Bivol, in the event he beats Bivol, if hell freezes over and he beats Bivol, is he fighting better BF? Canelo man fans, because you can't comment here. You'll comment when this live is over. And you're going to be disrespectful and you're going to get deleted. Don't even worry about it. Um, but I'm asking. Y'all want him in the ring with better BF? He will not, that'll be the first fight you see Canelo get hurt. Like he'll get his shit bust. That'll be the first time you'll see Canelo take a strategic knee. Like, yo, I know I blocked that punch with my arm. I think my arm is broke and my ribs are still broke. You ain't fucking with Zod. You ain't fucking with, kneel before Zod, motherfucker. Where my shit at? Y'all fucking with my nigga Zod, man. Get out of here, man. I'm gonna get the Zod shit out. <laughs> oh my god, man. I swear to God, I hate boxing. But I love boxing. But I hate boxing. But I love boxing. I hate boxing. But I love boxing. But I hate boxing. But I love boxing. But I hate boxing. Why do you say this to me? When you know I will kill you for it. That man will fuck Canelo up. He'll beat all of his teeth out of his mouth. He will hit him in the, in the fucking belly button and sever his spine. He'll have that Paul Williams injury. We better be able to get done with him. Why do you say this to me? When you know I will kill you for it. Fuck out of here. He could have fought better be if. He went up and fought better. He went up, he went up and fought Bibble because Bibble looked subpar in his previous two fights. And he had belts. He said, let me legacy pad there. And let me remind y'all again. Let me remind y'all again. <clears throat> let me remind y'all again. He was trying to go to Cruiserweight to fight Makabu. Because Makabu had a belt. That fell through. He fought Bibble and lost. But Macaboo had a green belt. Better be if has a green belt. What's up? You got this love connection with Mauricio Silly, man. You could have easily made the Better Be a fight. I text John Scully. I said, y'all gonna get the call? He said, doubt it. Look at that. I text John Scully after the um uh, uh Bibble fight. I said, I see now. I, I hope everyone sees. what I say? I hope everyone sees now why he didn't choose Better Be if He said, yup, in caps. Better Be if knocks Canelo Alvarez out. So I'm asking you Canelo man fans, if no Benavides, if no Bivol, no Charlo or Charlos, no Andre, what the fuck do you want him to do? Go ahead. John Ryder, go ahead. John Ryder. Your Fox is all in that super chat. Much love. He said Canelo using hand excuse to hide because the sanctions uh, bodies about to make everyone fight. Don't be surprised if he's conveniently stripped. Yo, I read something about that. I didn't read all of it. Thank you for, for bringing that up though. Is there an article? Cause I saw something about it. I didn't get all of the news on it though. Is there an article about these sanctioning bodies about to make all of the top guys fight? I could have swore I saw something about that, Jafar. I, I, I think I saw, I think I know what you're talking about. You're gonna see a lot of truth come out. A whole lot. General in the building, salute. Wait a minute. Okay. 
Okay. No, you gotta make sure it's the, it's, it's the real people because you know we get weirdos. See, I missed, I missed the chat. There we go. Brother Jermaine Bean in the building. He said, keep on punching, Drew. Salute to you, family. Salute. Johnny Q, I see you. And here goes my guy, Big Dog Willie. <laughs> he said, Khan has 85 inch verticals and runs the 4.0 and 40. Here's what y'all don't know about Amir Khan. He tried out for the New York Jets. He tried out for um, a, a, a running back. And he was so good that he said, you know what? I'm going to stay in the UK because I don't want to embarrass everybody in the NFL. And everyone was like, yo, man, thank you. Thank you. And um, Dan Raphael was there, but they threatened him. They said, if you say anything with your fat ass, we're going to kill you. He said, no problem. I'll never say anything. And he wobbled out of the fucking... He wobbled out the arena. And um, Amir Khan got on his magic carpet and played his flute and flew off. <laughs> Kel too slimy, salute. <laughs> Rampage, what up? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, They're going to... Um, Everybody's gonna have to fight, man. Everybody's gonna have to fight. <laughs> Magic carpet. Yeah, we like Amir Khan. Fuck that. Amir Khan's watching me right now. Smoking a cigar lit with a stack of money. I don't feel sorry for him. He's a fucking millionaire. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Who, who who who's having the last laugh for real for real right <laughs> i'm over here talking shit on youtube we got to speed up mike biggs in a building <laughs> yo dave you know what happened oh he blocked you <laughs> yo let me tell you the dan raphael story we was in vegas and um it was at the press conference wild the fury three right and um, I saw him wobbling from, you know, it was right after I took that picture with, with Joe Parker, right? And um, well, Aram called him a fat bastard. Yeah, Aram is slick with his mouth. And um, oh, that was the same, that was the same night Aram cursed out Mike Cappinger. What's that? When this shit happened, same night. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Yup, same night. So I see um, Fat Dan walking. So I said, there go Dan Raphael. So I start walking towards him. And I know he caught me out his peripheral because he accelerated. I said, oh, this nigga can move. He went from wobbling to like a quick little shuffle. He was shuffling so fast, I saw smoke coming from the bottom of his heels. Right from the bottom. He turned into a fucking, he turned into Thomas the Train in this motherfucker. And he just accelerated. I was like, oh shit. Now, I don't know what I was gonna say to him but I knew that when I got there, I would have something relevant. I don't know. I was like, damn, man. I said, like, I want to say something to him. I wanted to challenge his integrity as a journalist. And this is perfect. We're here to support Deontay. And contrary to popular belief, outside of one drunk motherfucker, the UK fans were super cool. So there was no beef. Nobody was fighting, nothing like that. So I said, well, damn, let me go talk to them. So I started accelerating. He, and I see he picked up speed. What the fuck? And I noticed he was walking with some dudes. So when I got like, I swear to God, I was like four feet from him. And I almost said that some dude walked right in front of me 
And he looked up at me. He said, come on, bro. Voice just like that. Come on, bro. I said, oh, this is security. <laughs> come on, bro. <laughs> hey, he didn't want to have to work. My big ass. He didn't want to have to work. He's like, oh, come on, bro. He looked at me. Come on, bro. Voice cracking and shit. I said, God damn. Ain't that serious? How you know I ain't want a picture? Motherfucker. Now nobody want a picture with him. He had security. In what universe does a journalist need security? When the fuck does a journalist need security? I let Thomas the train just boogie. I was like, look at this motherfucker. And he left the <laughs> He left that little motherfucker. Now I don't know if all I know that motherfucker's probably a, a Marine, a ninja, Chuck Norris son, or a, a, a distant cousin. He might have kicked my ass for all I know. I don't know. But I know he intercepted me. I said, bro, I said, bro, I ain't even that serious. I said, I just want to ask him something. It's all it's all right. But I had on my LDBC shirt. Wasn't hiding. We don't hide, no need to. You see BFTB shirt before you actually make his face out. You see BFTB on his shirt and on his fitted way down the block. I said, look, there go BFTB. And we look, oh yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> he said, come on, bro. <laughs> I was like, I was like, bro, it's not that serious. I mean, I was like, all right, man, go ahead, man. Whatever, it ain't, it ain't that serious. What the fuck? What was I gonna do? But he anticipates, he writes such bullshit, he anticipates people running up on him and knocking him the fuck out. I'm dead serious. My brother made event mark. He said, My short stint on Twitter, I posted a picture of him where he looked like a Thanksgiving Day parade balloon. Copied him, <laughs> and he blocked me immediately. <laughs> I know that picture. Don't I have it? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do I have that picture handy? Oh my god. Do I have it? The fuck? Damn. I know I got it, Mark. I got it somewhere. I had it. Where the fuck is it? Nah, it'll take me a minute to find it. Yeah, it'll take me a minute. But I got it though. It was right after this picture, I saw Fat Dan. I was actually surprised how tall um, Joseph Parker was. I said, yeah, this guy's pretty tall. He's tall. It was right after that, because my, my brother Classic took the picture, right? And we were talking, and then I looked. Yo, you know who's big as fuck? Um, what's his name? That, <laughs> um, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> and motherfucker who fought, uh, um, oh man, why am I having a brain fart right now? The Cuban, he beat the shit out of F.A. Jogba. What's his name? God damn, help me, y'all. Jay Boomin, what up? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm having a brain fart. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, damn. Oh, man. Fuck is his name? So, yeah, yeah, Frank Sanchez. That nigga big as fuck. He like 6'4". I was like, what the fuck? He walked right past me. I gave him a head nod. He said, hey, hey. I said, hey, what up? I was like, oh, shit. That nigga's big. He's big. I was like, yo. Yo, I swear to God, he could dunk a basketball. Hell yeah. I said, sheesh. That nigga's big as fuck. 
I was kind of concerned. I said, you know, I think he's going to beat. He's going to beat F.A. But the size might be a problem. He came out that goddamn conference. I said, hold on. Wait a minute. He a big boy. I said, nah, he's going to be all right. He's going to be just fine. Right after this pick, I'm staying with Classic. Classic over there fucking with the UK dudes. They staring at him. It was hilarious. <laughs> and I said, oh, shit, they go Dan Raphael. Uh, yeah, he does, Robert. Um, Yeah, he actually does. He actually does. He actually does. You know? Uh, he, yeah, man. He actually does. But he's down the bus ass, man. He, he's a problem. And he, he showed it because F.A. was confused all fucking night. I told you I sat next to the dude, that whole uh, British family. And... I was telling the guy, I said, he says, I'm not familiar with um Frank. I said, this this guy right here, I said, this guy is the younger version of King Kong Ortiz. This guy's a problem. He said, yeah. I said, watch. And we watched the fight. I analyzed it with him. Man, I had such a good time in Vegas, man. We didn't get the outcome that we wanted, but it was meant for me to be there because I met real UK supporters. The guy that was drunk the night before saw me the next day and he apologized. I said, bro, it's all right. It was funny as hell. It's all right. No violence, nothing. There was British people walking around with MTK Global shirts. Oh, shit, MTK Global. Yeah, those shirts, you got to eBay them fuckers now. But never mind that shit. They were cool as fuck. And we sat there and we watched it. And I was like, yeah, he's like, oh, my God. He said, man, this guy, I said, I'm telling you, this guy's a problem. I said, he apparently he's younger than King Kong Ortiz. I know that headline says different, but... Yeah. And F.A. couldn't touch him that night. Couldn't touch him. And F.A.'s a big, powerful guy. Couldn't touch him. Knocked him down, too. I was like, whew. This guy's a problem. I would not take that Vegas trip back for the world, man. I learned so much. I honestly thought there was going to be a, a list of problems. I'm saying, man, we're going to go down there and somebody's going to say something and we're going to have to do what we got to do, man. I don't want to be like that. I don't want no problems. Everybody got families and shit. We, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to do all that. We had fun. We had fun, man. Everything was peace. Everything was peace. We salute to my brother, Carolina Ryder. Man. Great times, man. Great time. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, man. Uh, this, this thing with Oscar, I agree with him. I agree with him. I agree with him. And fuck you, Canelo, man. For real, man. Fuck you. Fuck you with a lit flare. You ain't shit for this, man. You ain't shit for this. For real, man. Frank Sanchez says he's 29. What? What? It says that? Y'all not... Serious? Hold on, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He is not 29! Yeah, he's 6'4". Nah. Yeah, this 29. Hold on, let me show y'all something. Bro, don't do this to us. That was Vegas. That man is not 29, bro. 29? He's 29. He's 29? Look, the man can fight. He is a problem. He's the threat. But 29? Nah, bro. There go my brother on Senior X. What up? 
29? Y'all, y'all believe he's 29? For real, man. And this is no shade. Bad head genetics, Edgar says, probably. But 29, though, look at the rest of his head, his face. 29? One of my boys started going bald when he was 19 years old. He was nervous. He just said, fuck it, man. Exactly, Dave Houseway. How? David said, no way he's 20. Bro, he's not 29, man. I'm not having that. He's 35. Easy. Easy. He's in shape. He could box. He's a he's a bad man. But I'm not buying 29. That is impossible. No, 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 no. And this is no shade. He's gonna see me and fuck me up. He's gonna be like, me now, boom! Drew gonna be on the floor. That's Vegas right there. That's that's the round he dropped him. As a matter of fact, y'all see the ref? That's Mike Ortega. He was supposed to referee the main event. They switched him out and put in Russell Mora. That's just a little uh, fast facts for y'all. And F.A. Job was, what, 6'7", himself. He bust his ass. 29? That's a negative, K. No. He is not 29. Uh oh. I'm sorry, man. This brother's not, no. This brother's not 29, man. It's okay. Just say your age, man. You know what my problem is? When these guys age overnight, bro. You were like, what happened? He was really 40. That's what happened. That's what happened, man. Negative, 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 negative. He's not 29, bro. And we can't we can't prove it. We'll ne- I know main box of biker says we can't we'll never be able to prove it. They come from Cuba, we just gotta take <laughs> Yeah, I remember the Dominican kid that played Little League and he was striking out all the kids. And then he found out he was really like 20. <laughs> Y'all remember that shit? We were praising him like, oh my god, this kid's a prodigy, he's nice with it. Like, yeah, guess what? Um, that kid should be in Little League. He should be in the minors. He's like 20. He had a big, he had a connected beard and all this shit. I was like, yo. <laughs> Damn, man. Fuck that. These motherfuckers wait till I get on live to do construction, man. This is crazy. Anyway, uh, fuck Canelo. I'm going to remain on this bumper until Benavidez gets his due. I don't give a fuck about anything else he says. All right? I'm sticking up for David Benavidez. He deserves it. All right? He deserves... What, a Canelo fan is going to tell me he don't deserve it? Benavidez don't deserve nothing? He's right there in line at 168. And before you tell me he don't deserve it, before you play that bullshit, what has he done? Abney Yojo. How about that? As soon as he fought Abney Yojo and Rocky Field and JC, what up? Once he did that, the what he's done argument went right out the window. It went right out the window. Philip D, what up? He killed his own argument. I don't want to hear shit. You fucking Hoosiers. Man, salute to everybody in the Venmo, the Zelda Cash App, Super Chats, man. Um, salute to, uh, salute, no, salute, salute to my stalkers. <laughs> salute to your monkeys. <laughs> Hello, monkeys. I can't stand y'all. Mm. Monkey! Salute to the Reg Gang. Come on! Canelo fans, 
Y'all mad? Money mad. Mad? Money mad. Stay mad. Um, y'all make sure y'all tune in to um, the pay. Oh, well, tonight we got we got a couple of things going on. Y'all make sure y'all y'all better be uh, um, tuned in to Stormy B Man tonight. Nerds on culture. You know what we're going to be discussing tonight? Your favorite childhood toys from the 70s and beyond. Well, I don't know if we can get through it. 70s, 80s, we might have to do something else. 80s is my cutoff point, but I know about everything in the 90s because I, I got younger siblings and shit like that. And we're going to be discussing your favorite toys. And then... Pay for Excellence podcast tonight. Um, we're gonna be talking about. Um, should I do that tonight? Let me see. We're gonna discuss losers. We're going to discuss losers. All right? We're going to discuss... Now, I need y'all to pay attention. This is why you, you need to subscribe to my second channel. And uh, while y'all at it, y'all subscribe to... Y'all see Dave in there, right? Y'all see Dave in here? Let me go, let me go highlight. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to my brother, that dude named Dave. All right? We're going to be discussing losers. You loser ass niggas. You loser ass motherfucking dudes. The 16%. You losers. We're going to talk about you tonight. And we're also going to talk about why y'all get all the pussy. Why the losers getting all the pussy? Now I'm a married man. I'm good. But when I was coming up, and fellas, I'm going to say this and get the fuck out of here. Y'all go to school. Y'all always had a job. Even when you live with your parents, y'all did the right thing. Y'all was never on the corner. Y'all value your education. You value your family's name. You knew that if you did something fucked up in the street, your family would be like, yo, that's 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 Bertha's son. I don't know what she's raising him to do. You value your family name. But you always had that those one or two friends that didn't give a fuck. If they were a little taller than you, a little more athletically built. You know what I'm saying? And somehow, when y'all started hanging out, and when y'all got older, all the women gravitated towards them. And you're like, they're going to find out the hard way. That nigga's a loser. And they always, they got all the pussy. And you had to work extra hard just to buy a bitch a drink. Can I buy you a drink? Eh, no, nah, let me buy you a drink. That nigga sit by the bar. Shorty be like, can I buy you a drink? You be like, fuck, he's a loser. He live with his mother. I got my own apartment. I got my own car. I'm making X amount of dollars a year. I can't even get a look. And they find out the hard way that this nigga ain't shit. So we're going to talk about the losers. But why they get all the pussy? Fellas, tell me I'm lying. Dude, Dave, what time you going live? Let me know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That right there? That will not disappoint. Estrada and Chocolatito are wind-up dogs. I like that fight. I'm going to do a video about that. I like that fight so much. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why the loser ass dudes get all the they, they get all the tail. They get all the tail. It's life. And you know what happens? Those women, when they're done, 5 p.m. bet. When they're done playing, they're over 30 with a kid, and now they're ready to be a wife. And now they come to you. Why we never got together? Bitch! What the fuck you mean? <laughs> Bitch, I 
I'm about to retire now. I'm about to retire and move somewhere. I'm getting a house built. What the fuck you mean? Why we never got together? We're going to talk about it. So we got a few things going on here. We got Dave going live. We got, we got the rest of the LDBC fam going live. We got, Storm, I'm excited for, for Stormy B, man. Nerds on coach of the night. And 10.30 Eastern Standard Time, the Pay for Excellence podcast. You already know what time it is. Suit to everybody. Much love and appreciation, everybody. And I'll be back tonight, and I'll be back tomorrow. And salute to you, Canelo Man fans. Move! Why are you gay? Who says I'm gay? You are gay.